almost oh, oh, sorry. That's okay. My one. <laughs> almost half of Scotland's population could be living under the tightest form of lockdown by the end of this week. Nicola Sturgeon confirmed today she's looking closely at implementing level four restrictions in large swathes of the central belt. The areas in question are home to around 2.3 million people. Under those conditions, everything that's deemed non-essential, shops, gyms, hairdressers and so on, would close. And only essential businesses, as well as schools, colleges and universities, would stay open. The full announcement will be made tomorrow. One of the key indicators driving the decision is the number of positive cases per 100,000 of the population put into level four. The Nine's political reporter David Wallace Lockhart has been speaking to some businesses in Greenock who could be forced to close by the end of the week. <laughs> Well, there was more good news today in the search for a COVID vaccine. Another one's emerged and it seems to be even more effective than the first. Clinical trials on 30,000 people in the United States were hailed as a huge success. The American developers, Moderna, say their vaccine is 94.5% effective. It's been tested on a wide range of people, including the over 65s. The UK government says it'll have 5 million doses from spring, which is enough to vaccinate two and a half million people. Meanwhile, hundreds of people from across Tayside and Fife are being asked to participate in a new vaccine trial here, as the Nines innovation correspondent Laura Goodwin reports. We certainly are. Well, along with all the hope about vaccines, there's been some big news about testing too. Two new mega labs will open early next year. They'll double the amount of tests which can be carried out each day, and one of them will be here in Scotland. Let's get more on this from the Nines, Connor Gillis. Hi, Connor. Hello. But before we talk about these mega labs, I think we should just kind of give everyone a refresher of the state of our testing system at the moment. Uh, how's it all going? Well, I spoke to the Scottish as well, and then there's the other side of that, the smaller portion, which which is run by NHS Scotland and it is your care home tests, your hospital patients. A couple of weeks to go, still a wee bit of work um, to go on that, uh, but they do think they will have sufficient capacity and there will be no issues. Just for context. Okay, and so looking to these mega labs then, I mean, there's been a lot of excitement about these potential vaccines for obvious reasons, but even if we look ahead to kind of next spring, you know, we're still going to be needing to do lots of testing, aren't we? Yeah, as you said, uh, just linked to this as well. And crucially, it's going to be around long after COVID um, is, uh, is God work. And if the looming lockdowns making you head out onto the hills, a word of warning. Now to some of the day's other news and teachers are being asked if they would consider strike action over school safety concerns. The and here on The Nine, you can follow our stories on social media too. There are the details right in front of me there. We're on Instagram and Twitter at BBC Scott Nine. Now, more than three weeks after ministers here announced routine testing for home carers, we still don't know when the policy will be rolled out. Staff we've spoken to who are caring for elderly and disabled people in their homes say they feel let down and forgotten about. Their union is calling for urgent action and they want the test to be introduced immediately. The Nine's Hazel Martin has been speaking to the health secretary, Jean Freeman, and the care workers themselves. Now, hundreds of babies have been snatched from their mothers on the streets of Kenya before being sold on for as little as £350. A BBC investigation has uncovered evidence of the child trafficking network targeting vulnerable homeless mothers in the East African country. A warning, you might find parts of this report by Jerry Mwangi distressing. Oh, what a shocking and really distressing story there. OK, let's have a look at the sport now, shall we? With Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you very much. Good evening. The Scotland women's head coach, Shelley Kerr. And I still don't really know why they picked Wrexham, but I'm sure the fans <laughs> no, will be delighted I'm with sure the money they that they might have put in. Never mind Wrexham. What about these motocross bikes? I know, it was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. How many takes did your piece of camera take, Amy? I will show you the first attempt where I tried <laughs> to see it, and then, because I planned to start off, but I kept stalling, so I realised I had to keep moving. But know, yes, it took about 20 takes, Rebecca. Well. <laughs> there is nothing I would have loved more as a child, and that was my dream. You know the closest I got to it? I used to attach a playing card with a clothes peg <laughs> to the back wheel of my bicycle so when it went through the spokes it went <laughs> and I made a noise like a motorbike when I went around the streets. Well, times have eight. changed. Oh Martin what an image that is. The oh, closest you ever got. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. What a dream. Thanks guys. Well done, Cheers Amy. Thank See you soon.
Now, who should decide what we can and can't say? It's a simple question with a difficult answer. Earlier this year, the Scottish Government introduced new legislation aimed at cracking down on hateful and offensive speech. Its backers say it's necessary to make hate crime legislation fit for the 21st century, while its opponents claim it goes too far and infringes on freedom of speech. The Scottish author Irvin Welsh has never shied away from causing offence, has he? From train spotting to the acid house to filth, he's practically built his career on it. And now he's made a documentary out of it too. Offended by Irvin Welsh asks whether we are now too easily offended as a society. A little while ago I asked him what he thinks of everything from the new hate crime bill to online cancel culture. Now to report the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, is eyeing up a plan to charge drivers to use roads. He wouldn't confirm or deny the rumours earlier, but if a so-called road pricing system does come into force in the UK, what might it look like? Well, here to take us through it all is the Nine's Consumer Affairs correspondent, Nick Sheridan. Hi, Nick. Hello there, Rebecca. How are things? Yes, of course, tell you, Rebecca. Thank you very much indeed for that, Nick. Now then, the restrictions we are all living under at the moment have scuppered so many things we used to take for granted, haven't they? Heading off for a weekend's... Melrose. Well, it's impacting absolutely everything, isn't it? It really is. Now then, I don't mind telling you, I absolutely love this story. It concerns our new unofficial national anthem. It happened after Scotland players, of course, were filmed singing Yes Sir, I Can Boogie in the wake of that massive win in Serbia last week. Well, those scenes of joy shared so far and wide on social media have helped propel the song high into the charts. One of the singers from the band who recorded it, Bakara, has now said she wants to re-record a special version when the team play in the European Championships next summer. Let's look back at how the original and the Scotland version compare. <laughs> Well, earlier we spoke to Baccarat singer Mar Maria Mendiola about how she feels seeing her 70s hit return to the charts. Raining a great deal in Glasgow just now, Maria. You would never have imagined back then that 43 years later your song would be the favourite of the Scottish national football team. I will never... In that naughty video he made, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, we've been hearing today as well that you would be well up for re-recording the song with the, Scot the Scotland lads, is that right? It is, will be... A ...to the stadium, you'll hear 60, 70, 80,000 Scotland fans singing your hit 43 years later, and they will say... You, you, the whole nation had, had skin like chickens <laughs> when we won that game the other night, Maria. It was a fanta After a hard year, it was a fantastic, fantastic night for this whole country, and... You She's still a superstar. She really she? is. Skin like chickens. <laughs> yeah, or as we, we all call it, had skin bumps. like chickens. Goosebumps that night, <laughs> didn't we? We should explain, by the way, to anybody who's not completely in on the gag, that Andy Considine, the, uh, the Scotland defender, recorded a version of Yes Sir I Can Boogie with his pals on his stag night exactly. in questionable uh, garments. Uh, and he thought it would be kept as a gag within all his mates, but of course it didn't. It went viral, Andy. and he got an absolute roast for all his teammates. And now, look what he's done. He's turned it into an anthem. He's brought it all back up again, hasn't he? Yeah, hasn't he just? Good on him, good lad. Hello, Kirstine, how are you? Hi, I'm how on earth do you follow that? Well, I don't from know. yes sir, I can boogie to no thank you, it's about to get bogging. <laughs> Think is the weather message. You know, that just sums it up, Martin. Oh, I was going to be very polite and just say turbulent, you know, roller coaster weather over the next few I think the nation would appreciate that better, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks yeah. very much. Uh, yes, uh, we did. Morning. That's the forecast. Oh dear. Wintry oh. showers. <laughs> Wintry showers. Back. For everyone. Not for everyone. Not everyone. Especially in the north. All right, mm -hmm. okay. Batten down yeah. the hatches, keep them battened until about. March. <laughs> yeah, that say. sounds about right, We're about it? to go into a long, cold spell. <laughs> OK, on that note, that's it from us tonight. We'll be back at the same time, same place tomorrow. But from Rebecca and me, thanks as ever for watching. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Good night.